Hey everyone, what's going on? Happy first contact day to you, April 5th, 2021. My name is Jim Johnson. I am the project manager for the Star Trek Adventures role-playing game produced by Modiphius Entertainment. I thought I'd take the opportunity to join in on the festivities for today and provide you with an update on the game and the game line. Let's just jump right into it, shall we? So, for those of you who don't already know, Star Trek Adventures is the current tabletop RPG version of Star Trek. It was published in 2017. You can explore the Final Frontier as the crew of a Starfleet vessel, explore strange new worlds, etc., etc., all through Star Trek. So if you're familiar with other tabletop role-playing games, including Star Trek versions in years past and other types of tabletop role-playing games, this is the Star Trek game to be playing right now if you want a tabletop experience, either virtually or in person. The uh, base game itself is uh, a core book, of course, a Starfleet focused. You can see the uh, example of the layout here with the uh, Elkar's layout design, TNG uh, focus for the layout, but the rules set uh, covers the entire spectrum of Star Trek from Enterprise to Voyager and beyond, so don't feel like the Elkar's holds you back from playing a TOS original series type of game or an Enterprise type of game or even a Discovery type of game. Uh, it's just the layout we went with a few years ago. And it's what we're using right now, but we do have other layouts for other uh, other products. Uh, we have uh, Enterprise and Discovery uh, coming up here, and a few other ones to check out. So, uh, Core Book is your first way into the game. There's a couple other entry points into the game. You can pick up our Quick Start PDF for free off of uh, Drive Through RPG or from Modifius.net. And we also have an inexpensive starter set, starter box set that you can get, and that includes Advent and Adventure. Uh, some tokens, some dice, pre-generated characters, some maps, and a basic rules guide to get you started up and running with everything you need to play through the game. And then the idea is if you like the starter set, you would then go and buy the core book and then get a group of players together and play your own campaigns and adventures in the Star Trek setting. In addition, late last year, we released the Klingon Empire core rulebook, which is a uh, alternate path into the game, and this gives you the opportunity to play a crew of characters that are not Starfleet. They are, in fact, Klingons. So if you uh, if you love the Klingons and you want a slightly different game experience from the uh, straightforward and classic uh, uh, Starfleet idea, you go with the Klingons, grab yourself a copy of the Klingon core book, either the regular version with the artwork on it or the uh, limited ed limited edition cover there on the, uh, on the left that you see with the Klingon symbol debossed on the cover. Uh, in addition, uh, this year we're releasing, uh, they should be, if not in, in stores now, very, very soon in stores now, because I know that the distribution has been heading out there. We have a Klingon Game Master Toolkit with a GM screen, an adventure, and some reference cards and a map, and a set of Klingon dice. You can see that it's a 2D20. The 20-sided uh, dice have the Klingon symbol on the one face, and uh, four challenge dice that you can use within the game, and those have the Klingon symbol on two faces, effects symbols on two faces and then two blank faces. Uh, these are not required to play the game, of course. You can use standard D20s and standard D6s, but if you want that little extra something for your game, go ahead and grab a copy uh, or grab a set of the, uh, the Klingon dice. A couple of recent, recent releases that we've had. Uh, it just turned out that they were both free. Uh, we have a mission pack, uh, mission briefs number one, Tales of the Early Federation. This is one of our first, in fact, this may be our, this may be our first dedicated enterprise product. Uh, or at least it's branded um, interior, the interior layout is uh, Enterprise Layout. Uh, it's similar to the Enterprise Adventure that we released in the Mission Compendium Number 2, Strange New Worlds. We're using that same layout aesthetic so that you get that Enterprise feel from the layout. Uh, this is a set of 10 high-level adventure outlines that you can use to drop into your campaign. You just fill in the material that you need as far as like stat blocks and characters and uh, situations, uh, but hopefully it provides you with a starting point to get some adventures up and running in your game. And of course, with, as with most of our products, um, all of the mission briefs can be adapted to be used in other time periods. So if you're running a next generation era game or you're running a original series game, you should be able to take all the adventures in this pack and adapt them for use in your campaign. And again, this is a free download, so by all means, go ahead and grab it, check it out and uh, hope you uh, get some joy out of it. In addition, we just released the Klingon Quick Start. So those of you who are interested in the Star Trek game but don't necessarily want to play the Federation, grab a copy of the Klingon Quick Start. It provides you all the rules you need to get up and running and provides a full-length adventure 
that you can use to have your uh, Klingons go on a secret mission to uh, infiltrate a Dominion outpost and uh, face off against some Jem Hadar. So that should be a fun, uh, fun evening or two of adventures for you. And then from there, if you like it, you can grab a copy of the Klingon Core Book and continue your adventures as Klingons. A couple upcoming releases we have coming up in the summer. We have the Shackleton Expanse Campaign Guide coming up in the summer. And we're still finalizing the cover art, so I don't have the final art for you here. But those of you who have been with the game from the very beginning, back in 2016, 2017, you'll know that we did a living campaign for about a year and a half. And we were able to complete the first season's worth of adventures in that. We had a total of, I think, 17 or 18 adventures total in the living campaign. But part of them were in the original series era, and the rest were in the next generation era. And uh, those were the, the first season's worth of stories telling an epic story about a, a mysterious alien race and how Starfleet got involved in it, spanning two time frames. We have uh, taken the living campaign off of hiatus, so to speak, and uh, adapted all of that material to be folded into this campaign guide. And we've added another whole bunch of uh, full-length adventures. So in this book, you're going to get a whole bunch of setting material for the Shackleton Expanse, the uh, Starbase there, Narendra Station, and uh, just a load of um, a 10 part epic campaign covering the beginning to the end of, of the story and a lot of mission briefs, a lot of other content that I hope you, uh, you take and have endless, endless hours of gaming goodness. Uh, the great thing about the Shackleton Expanse campaign guide is that I've uh, made sure that it's uh, usable as both the Starfleet crew and a Klingon crew. So if you've been playing the Klingon Quick Start and then you grab the Klingon Core Book and you still want more Klingon stuff to do, uh, check out the campaign guide because that is going to give you an opportunity to uh, to play a full-blown campaign from the Klingon perspective as opposed to the Starfleet perspective. Now, of course, if you're playing Starfleet, then you know grab the grab the book and uh, carry on. Uh, this is intended to replace any potential future living campaigns. Uh, we decided that the living campaign just wasn't quite working the way we wanted it to when it came out a couple years ago. I think it was a great idea. We were a little ahead of our time, uh, but the campaign guide itself uh, that provides enough information and uh, adventures and mission briefs, etc., that uh, a game master and a group of players could very easily get seven, eight, or nine seasons out of it, if not more, just depending on how far you decide to go with it. Uh, it's really up to you. It's uh, primarily designed to be a sandbox setting, so we do have a 10-part epic campaign in it, but um, I've tried to load it up with as much information as I could to, uh, to give you um, pretty much, uh, you know, as much gaming potential as you can imagine in this one book. So if you harken back to some of the classic campaigns for other game lines in years past, um, I've really tried to do that with this campaign guide. So I hope you check it out, and I hope you like it. Uh, beyond that, in the summer as well, heading into Q3, we're working on uh, producing the Tricorder set. This is an original series product. Uh, devoted uh, primarily to the, the original series fans, but you know, of course, if you're a Star Trek fan in general, you might dig it, uh, especially for its um, uh, cosplay potential as a wearable box with a strap and uh, all that good stuff. This is uh, a tricorder set. Uh, you can see the uh, information here on the screen, but uh, it's basically the uh, the Starfleet Core rulebook trimmed down to 300 and 304 pages, uh, digest sized and uh, reskinned in the original series uh, format that we use. And uh, we, uh, we did a top-down revision of the core book to, uh, to strip out any uh, next-gen or later era type of stuff. So you know, even all the example text was rewritten to be original series focused. Um, took out a couple of the next generation era uh, playable character species and uh, just did a little tidying up. Uh, we also had a last minute late um, opportunity to add in some of the rules from the Klingon Core rule book into here. So those of you familiar with the revised uh, optional rules for character advancement and reputation, I was able to fit those into the into the digest along with a couple other rules tweaks. Uh, I'm not 100% confident that all the rule tweaks made it into the tricorder set, but uh, the reputation rules certainly did, and I know that's been a big draw for folks with the Klingon book. So I hope you check it out. In addition, there's a three-part campaign. Uh, two sets of character sheets, the original series crew and the original crew for the uh, for the Lexington. Those are original creations. Uh, a whole bunch of dice, including uh, a green Captain's Kirk kind of tunic colored dice, which are um, uh, currently unique to this set. Uh, a bunch of challenge dice, tokens, etc. So this is pretty much a game in a box 
if you are a uh, original series era fan and want pretty much everything for uh, the game, you know, the, to get you up and running. Like the, the the rules digest has pretty much everything you need from character generation to rules mechanics, etc. So, if you're a fan, I hope you check it out. Look forward to seeing that soon. Uh, we do have additional releases coming up in 2021, a mix of uh, full blown books and uh, digital PDF releases. Can't share a whole lot about them now, but um, as we get closer to uh, to release time, we'll be putting up uh, pre orders on the website and then also making the products available and when they are available but some really cool stuff coming up so as I tell fans on uh, social media you know save up your latinum because there's some really cool stuff coming down the road for this year and even into uh, the next couple of years as well so got a lot of stuff on the on the development plate so uh, be uh, be looking forward to more uh, news as we can share it so now we're going to get into the Q&A section of this. Um, I made a point of creating an online survey so that I could start uh, being a little bit more efficient in gathering up everybody's questions. Instead of answering uh, questions on like five or six or seven different social media channels, I'm trying to funnel it all into one place. Uh, the link is available on the official Modiphius forums, on the Star Trek Adventures Facebook groups, the subreddit, a couple Discord channels. So it's out there in several places. If you can't find it, let me know. Uh, my email address is going to be at the end of this presentation, so I'm happy to take your questions anytime over email, and I'll just add them to the intake form, and I will uh, answer these questions uh, approximately every month, but we'll see how many we get. If I get a lot of questions in a short period of time, I might do this uh, project manager update more than monthly, but for now, my intention is to do it monthly, so let's see how it goes. Uh, and by all means, anytime you have a question or comment about the game, don't hesitate to reach out either through the survey or email me directly. I'm always happy to uh, to chat with fans about this game because it's, uh, it's a passion project of mine. I love it, and I am gratified and humbled every day to see how many people online are loving this game as well. So please add your voice to it. So let's uh, jump into it here, shall we? First question, Scott from Music, Pennsylvania. Is there a limit to how many times per round the collaboration talent can be used if momentum is spent for each use? Well, uh, you do have to use momentum for each time you use it, and uh, no, there are there is no practical limit on this. Pretty much, uh, as long as you have momentum to spend, or if you're willing to 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 add the threat to uh, give your game master more threat to make use of the collaboration talent, there is no practical limit. Uh, your game master might choose to limit it to some extent, depending on their needs of the game or you know whatever house rules you might have in place. But uh, rules as written, there is no practical limit uh, because. It is a uh, immediate momentum spend, which means uh, that you can uh, you can add the threat and use it as many times as you want. Now, you know, there's probably instances where that might kind of using it repeatedly might strain credulity in the in the moment of the scene, right? Uh, but again, that's really dependent on your table and your game master and uh, how you can uh, make that work. But practically, no, there is no limit. Next question, Chris from Canada, is there ever going to be a resolution of the first season of the Living Campaign? Well, uh, the uh, the first season was resolved in the uh, in the free downloads that you can get online for the Living Campaign. The first season did come to a conclusion, um, but the Living Campaign itself has been um, reimagined, redesigned, reformatted, and turned into the Shackleton Expanse Campaign Guide, which I mentioned earlier. That hardcover will be out this summer, and it will provide a uh, a ten part epic campaign uh, from beginning to end, starting in the original series era, ending in the next gen era. Depending on you and your game masters, you may choose to extend it out even further. Uh, we, we've been pretty careful to not impose a lot of timelines within the epic campaign. So if you wanted to make it a short, fast campaign, you could do that. If you wanted to stretch it out over multiple years or even multiple decades, uh, I think you could probably do that with a, without a whole lot of difficulty. Um, but so the, the, uh, the storyline can be resolved through the campaign guide. Uh, hopefully that answers the question. If not, try again, uh, or you know, send me another question, and I'll, I'll try to answer it again. Next, Patton from Lexington, Kentucky. This game is amazing. Please keep the fresh content coming. I'm waiting patiently to give you all my money for the Picard and Discovery books. Thank you all. Yes, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, Picard and Discovery books are in the works. We have the license to Picard and to Discovery, and we are making every effort to take advantage of that, to uh, tap into the new fans that have joined the the Star Trek family through these two series so look forward to seeing more on that in the uh, in the coming months Fred from Ames Iowa 
When will we get a supplement devoted to Flotter T. Water III? I think it would be very popular among the Star Trek Adventures community. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Appreciate it. I, uh, I think uh, there might be some possibilities there. I think um, I'll have to talk to certain writers <laughs> in Star Trek Adventures in my, in my circle here and uh, see what we can do. But uh, I think there's uh, some potential to, to get Flotter involved one way or another. Uh, to, be, to be determined, though. But uh, thanks for the question. Mark from Chattanooga, Tennessee. When can I start writing for you? Well, you can start writing for me right now if you want. Send me an email. Uh, tell me what you're interested in. Uh, there's two easy ways. Well, not easy. Nothing's easy, right? Um, the two things I'm primarily interested in for new writers is pitches for mission brief packs and pitches for standalone adventures. Those are the best two entry points to get into the uh, into the game and to show me what you can write. Basically, uh, as an editor, I need I need writers who not only know Star Trek but who also know the game. Uh, the, the game system, the game rules, etc. Um, unfortunately, it's not enough to know Star Trek backwards and forwards. You need to know the game system too, because we are writing for an RPG. Um, it's not enough to just be able to write fluff. You need you need to know the mechanics too. So, um, but no, I'm absolutely eager and willing to read pitches. So uh, again, my email will be at the end of this presentation. Send me an email. Uh, let me know what you're interested in. Uh, if you have any industry credits or not, I don't really care. All I care about is whether you can write and whether you know Star Trek. Those are the big things for me. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from. I just want uh, great writers writing stuff, and I've given a number of writers uh, their first uh, their first RPG credits, and I would love to do it for more people. So by all means, send me send me your pitches. And uh, again, uh, email will be at the end of the at the end of this presentation. Next. Matu is Matuigman. Sorry for butchering that. Matu is G Man. Matu is G Man from Laconia, New Hampshire. Are there going to be life path choices for someone entering Starfleet later in life? They would have prior experience. Yeah, well, so the life path system in the in the game uh, as it stands right now, whether it's the Klingon life path in the Klingon book or the Starfleet life path in the Starfleet book, um, I'm, I'd have to double check it, but I'm pretty confident it doesn't really dictate how old your character is when they go through the life path. So you could have a senior character going through that life path and joining the joining the academy later in life, or um, or you can kind of flex it. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, flexible what you can do there. Uh, we may have some additional life path options coming up in the future. And um, uh, yeah, in the short term though, uh, what you have in the core book right now, you can pretty much, pretty much make an older character if you want. You can either make them a veteran or just uh, just say they join the academy later in life. I mean, we're talking about a, a Star Trek setting, especially next gen. I mean, even even the original series. Um, humans um, are living longer. There are plenty of species within the intellectual property that live longer than humans. For instance, Vulcans live into their 150s, 160s, if not older. And it is every reasonable belief that, or I mean, there's no reason to think that someone couldn't have multiple careers in a lifetime, right? We even see that now in the current world. Someone can go into a job for 25, 30 years and retire from that job and start a second career and go do something completely different. Maybe go back to school, get a degree, another degree, and go do something completely different for another 30 years and then, you know, retire or die in their late 80s, early 90s. So uh, no reason to think someone in the, uh, in the Star Trek setting couldn't have a full career from, you know, say, I don't know, I'm thinking humans, right? You know, 20 to 20, 20 to 50 ish, go do one career and then say, Hey, you know what? I'm ready to go take all this practical life experience and apply it to Starfleet and go to the Academy and attempt to pass it and go through it. And then, uh, and then go on from there with the, with another, with the second career. So I think, um, it's easy to equate Starfleet Academy with college and assume that everybody's young going in, but that's not necessarily the case. So I would say, uh, um, go crazy with it. Be be willing to take that life path and uh, and kind of uh, tweak the fluff text and uh, and play with it and create an older character. By all means, go for it. Next, uh, same same poster from Laconia. Uh, will there be core books for other species? Example, Romulans. Uh, at this point, probably not. I think the Klingons was the was the uh, single most popular species in the setting that could justify a core rule book by itself. Partly because of all the additional. Uh, uh, secondary sources and material out there, the fact that there's a Klingon language that's being spoken professionally by people around the world, 
Uh, we have a wealth of material on them from a number of different sources. Uh, we just don't have that with the uh, with the Romulans. We have bits and pieces here and there. It would make a very good source book, but I don't think there's enough there to justify a core book. And in addition to that, we're really trying not to bring out too many core books because we don't want to, uh, you know, we just don't want to, we don't want to do that, honestly. <laughs> uh, the the Klingons was the Klingon core book was uh, seemed like the right idea at the right time, not only to present the Klingons in a in a great alternative path to the game, but also to give us a chance to do a little bit of rules tweaking because uh, the game has been out for a few years now. Uh, so I, I don't think we're going to go down the road of more species focused core books. I think the next core book you see, aside from the um, aside from the digest that that's going to be in the tricorder book. I suspect the next core book you're likely to see, if we decide to do it, would be either a uh, revised edition, a second edition, or uh, something along those lines. I, I don't see us doing another species-focused core book. Uh, you can probably reasonably expect a, a Romulan book of some sort, or at least a book with more Romulan stuff in it. Um, I just don't think the Romulans um, are going to make it as a core book. We have to think about... Um, um, feasibility and uh, and budget and uh, ultimately it's all about sales and the the anticipated sales of a Romulan core book probably not that great and you know please prove me wrong or or, uh, or let me know send me an email tell me otherwise if you if there's a uh, a Romulan language institute out there somewhere or a very large cadre of Romulan gamers who are eager for a Romulan core rule book um, I'm happy to be proven wrong so let me know Let's continue. All right, Matthias from Ireland. Are you planning anything for the motion picture era? So the motion picture era, uh, we do have bits and pieces of it sprinkled throughout our different books, whether it's uh, space frames in the core rule book or in the command source book. Uh, I do want to do some movie era adventures, like standalone adventures. I just have not gotten that many pitches for them. So hint, hint, those of you thinking about writing for the line, if you have a great idea for a motion picture era adventure, by all means, I'd be happy to see them. Uh, ditto motion picture era uh, mission packs. I'd love to see some of those. Um, other than that, uh, nothing on the plans at the moment, although I do have a developmental wish board or, you know, wish list of on the whiteboard of things I'd like to do. There's probably 100 and, 110, 120 products on there right now that I would love to get to at some point. And uh, a motion picture source book or a motion picture something or rather is definitely on that list. Uh, not in production, of course, and not, not green, greenlit or anything, but uh, on, on the list of things that I would like to do, by all means, absolutely, motion picture is, is near and dear to my heart, and I would love to do more uh, books and products around the motion picture era. So best I can say right now is uh, we'll continue to sprinkle stuff into the books as we can, and then uh, just you know stay tuned for, uh, for news in the future. Luke from Indiana, are there any plans for a second edition or revised core rule book? Yeah, and as I mentioned, uh, we we might do a second edition or revised core at some point. Uh, no current plans to do so. Um, the game's been out for what four years now. We we made some little tweaks in the Klingon core book. You'll see some of those tweaks in the Starfleet core or in the uh, Starfleet uh, the Tricorder Digest. Uh, but at the moment, no plans for a second edition uh, just yet. I mean, we've talked about it internally. And it's on the uh, it's on the whiteboard uh, wish list, but uh, nothing we're definitely moving to uh, anytime soon. Uh, so I mean, we might do it, we might not do it, because honestly, the game I thought was pretty stable coming out of the uh, coming out of the gate in 2017. Uh, Going to do a little bit of tweaks, uh, but uh, you know, again, this is to be determined. So, uh, yep, yeah, nothing else to say there. Just thanks for the question. Moving on, Ed from Tacoma. What happens with a talent if a discipline is lowered due to milestone shift than its initial requirement? Yeah, so if for some reason you have a character who has a talent and over the course of their development due to a milestone they decide to drop a discipline in favor of raising a different one, uh, if, the, uh, if the requirements for the talent are lost, then they lose the talent as well. So they would have to pick a new talent to replace the one they just lost. Uh, so yeah, great question. Thank you for that. Hopefully that answered. If not, let me know. But uh, ultimately, yes, if, uh, if a character has a talent that they no longer meet the prerequisites for, then they would need to replace that talent with, uh, with something else. Uh, of course, you know, Game Master tables, table rules um, rule, so if you decide to house rule that differently, by all means do that. Uh, but at least as a, 
as as laid out in the book and as uh, Nathan Dowdell indicated to me. Uh, he's the rules developer, system designer for 2D20 and for the Star Trek Adventures game. I, I checked in with him and said, you know, what, what are your thoughts here? And he said that, uh, yeah, if a talent, uh, if a character loses the prereqs for a talent, they should be replacing it uh, until such time as they uh, they get the um, prereqs back. Then they could, you know, pick up the talent again in the future. Um, but, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Corbinian from Canada. I am a fan of the reputation system and milestone system in the Klingon core book. Are they going to be official alternate systems for future books? Yeah, so the uh, the alternate system in the Klingon book for reputation and milestones is an alternate system. Uh, you are welcome to use one or the other in your games. Uh, they are both you know, you know, effectively official for the purposes of the game. Uh, it's really up to the game master and the players to decide which one they'd rather use. Um, it is not going to be unique to the Klingon version of the game because we did have room in the tricorder uh, digest to fit them in, and I will pr probably make them available in the uh, Elkars layout at some point down the road. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the reputation system and milestone system in the Klingon core book is an optional uh, path for you to use. So I'd say you know in your session zero with your players and your game master. You know, maybe maybe come to an agreement as to which reputation system you want to use—the one in the Klingon book, slash Tricorder Digest, or the one in the Starfleet book. Uh, they're both official for the purposes of the game. Uh, it just depends on which one you'd rather have. Um, I like them both. I think I lean a little bit toward the Klingon one because it just feels a little bit more refined. But uh, you know, honestly, the first, the, the original version worked just fine for my group too. So, whichever one works works for you and your people. Next question. Um, McCall, M. Call, M. K. All, from Victoria. Star Trek has been licensed throughout the ages into books and games that you probably can't touch for various licensing issues. If Q were to snap his fingers and make it happen, what would you like to get your hands on? Oh, great question. Uh, so our license, um, the only thing our license doesn't really cover are the J.J. vs. Kelvin movie trilogy. Everything else is pretty much fair game. Um, not just the uh, the various series and the, the animated series and all the novels and all the comic books and everything else. Um, we've been pretty careful to kind of drop in Easter eggs here and there uh, for a variety of things, and you'll see more of those in, in upcoming products. Um, the, the only thing that's holding us back is really just like finding the finding the right people to talk to in these at these different organizations and companies and saying, hey, we'd like to reference this product or that product or this storyline or that storyline. And uh, most of the time, the same people approving our material at Viacom CBS are the same people that approve their material at uh, CBS of Paramount. <laughs> so it's pretty, it's been pretty easy so far for us to get approval to use whatever we wanted to. But uh, what, as far as the last part of the question here, if Q were to snap his fingers and make it happen, what would I like to get my hands on? Gosh, that's a great question. Um, Man, I don't know. We've got access to everything if we really want it. I think uh, if I thought that the sales were there, I would love to do a bunch of uh, supplements, probably digital supplements, on a whole bunch of the novels that have been coming out over the last 20 years or so. I think like a, a Star Trek Vanguard uh, supplement would be cool, and a Star Trek Titan supplement. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of novel series that have just been fabulous, and a lot of comic book series that have just been fabulous that I would love to support with... Uh, some sort of game product, um, how that would work out, like feasibility-wise and budget-wise, and like, could we make enough? You know, fr frankly, it's it's a business, right? So, could we make enough money off of it to make it to make it work? Um, I would love to just, <laughs> I would love to do Star Trek Adventure supplements for like everything out there, and uh, like even the Golden Books, right? The the children's books that are out now, the, the Golden Books children's books. I think it would be awesome for for the younger generation to to have some Star Trek Adventures material that they could. Uh, they could apply there. So, great question. I may not have been able to give you a good answer because uh, I think we can, like, if we're creative enough, we can access just about everything Star Trek. And um, I don't have a good idea right now on what we don't have access to that I that I would want. Um, but let me th think about it. Maybe next update I'll have a better answer for you. Moving on, Patrick from Canyon, Texas. Are there already life support belts in Star Trek and have I just missed them? I'd have to think about that, Patrick. Um, I don't think we've put life support belts into any of the products yet. Uh, if we ever do a animated series adventure or 
or supplement or something. I think it would certainly fit in there, but uh, yeah, to be determined. I don't think I don't I don't remember seeing one, but uh, um, I would love to see one at some point. So maybe uh, somebody who uh, pitches an adventure, or uh, or if we end up doing a uh, uh, a product, we can fit that in there somewhere. So great question. RC from Boston. Anything in the works to officially bring Star Trek Adventures to Foundry Virtual Tabletop? Uh, I don't have specifics for you, but we are working on a variety of virtual tabletop support coming up. Uh, I don't really have much more to say to that right now, except that we're looking at a variety of platforms and a variety of options to support the games. So just uh, stay tuned. It's taking a long time to get a lot of this stuff done. And uh, just uh, indulge your patience for a while longer. Uh, Katowice, Katowice. Now that CBS and Viacom and Paramount have merged, can we get some material and art for the Kelvinverse timeline? And what about Star Trek Online? Uh, so as I just noted, uh, we do not have rights to the Kelvinverse material, other than the very little bit at the very beginning involving the uh, supernova that wiped out the Romulans because that's been incorporated into Picard, and uh, we do have access to Picard. But as far as the rest of the Kelvinverse stuff, we don't have access to it. I have no idea if that's going to change in the future. Uh, there are some unique rights issues between Paramount, CBS, and Bad Robot that honestly are way above my pay grade, and I have no idea. So uh, all I can say right now for sure is that no, we don't have access to the Kelvinverse material, and you will not see any of that anytime soon in Star Trek Adventures products. As far as Star Trek Online, we do have a great partnership with the folks at Star Trek Online. We've been able to put some of their art into our books in exchange for uh, product codes for people to use to download some ships. Uh, we are continuing to work on that relationship uh, and keep it positive and awesome. And I hope to have more connections with Star Trek Online in the in the coming, you know, in the coming future. But uh, again, you know, stay tuned, stay tuned for that. Next question, Alicia from England. Great game, thank you. Always appreciate it. Uh, always gratifying to hear the the good words. Phoenix from Belgium uh, had several questions. We'll just start here. I, I'm not leaving any out. I'm just going to get to them one by one. Well, but if you support Virtual Tabletop, yes, we are supporting Virtual Tabletop. Uh, as I mentioned above, uh, we do have a variety of Virtual Tabletop support coming uh, for a variety of different platforms. Uh, we're not limiting ourselves to just one or two platforms. We're going to try to hit several of them. Um, as far as tile sets, tokens, objects, displays, furniture, textures, floor tiles, uh, that's going probably a little farther than what we're looking to do. Uh, partly because uh, as Star Trek Adventures is a more abstract combat type of game as opposed to other RPGs out there. Um, we're not really, you're not really expected to need to use a lot of battle maps or 3D um, furniture, etc. So I think we're not really looking toward that as far as products, at least in the um, in the near future. So you will see, you will be likely to see some tokens and some tiles, uh, map tiles, similar to what we've done for the Klingons and for the Federation as far as map tiles. Uh, but as far as furniture and objects and etc., uh, probably not. You'd probably have to cobble something together with all the many different token sets that are already out there for other games. Uh, so apologies for that, but it's just not uh, not not a focus of the game at this point. Uh, beyond, you know, we will be supporting virtual tabletop, but not probably not to the level that uh, that you're asking for here. Next question: Talents are great, but multi-level talents would be a great addition. Uh, yes, I can talk to Nathan about this. Uh, there's not a huge amount of crunch in this game, and talents are balanced against the game to a certain degree. I think having multi-level talents would probably move the game into more crunch and more splat books than, than we probably intend to have. Uh, but, uh, you yeah, know, this is a case where I can certainly talk to Nathan and say, you know, is multi-level talents something worthwhile? We do have some mechanics in the game for multi-talent or um, multi-level type of things. You know, certain... Uh, certain um, elements of characters or non-player characters can be at different levels and uh, they're not exactly talents per se but uh, um, yeah at the moment we're not really looking at uh, multi-level talents um, but we'll get back to you on that if I hear anything from uh, from Nathan thanks for the question next more options for grid based combat would be great players have problems with the variable ranges yeah so this is a, a Star Trek Adventures is primarily an abstract combat type of game we do have the red alert, red alert optional rules uh, in the operations source book and also uh, available for free download that go into more um, grid-based and tactical type of combat. I'd say 
make use of those if you haven't already. Um, again, this isn't really a tactical uh, combat type of game, so we're, we haven't leaned uh, in that direction lately in our, or, you know, in our products. Uh, we might look at that at some point down the road, but uh, nothing, nothing concrete at this time. So um, this might be a case where Star Trek Adventures was designed to do a particular type of gameplay and uh, not other types of gameplay, and uh, it, it might get to a point where we're tr we or certain fans are trying to do more with the game than it was designed to do. Um, so that might this may end up being a place where uh, you may have to do some house ruling and some customization to make it do what it, you exactly want it to do as far as grid-based combat. Um, but more on that in the future as, uh, as we uh, continue to develop other products. So stay tuned. Phoenix from Belgium continues to roll or not to roll. That is the question. Many game games have a system where the GM doesn't need to roll. Um, yeah, so this this game is not that. Uh, this was not designed for the GM to not have to roll any dice at all. Uh, however, it's an, it can it can be a very narrative heavy game. So you can uh, the game master can simply narrate events as opposed to making it go into. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, to go into uh, details on, um... yeah. Anyway, so the game was designed for game master to make a certain amount of rolls. You can narrate a lot of that away, um, but unlike other game systems out there where the game master doesn't need to roll, that wasn't really the intention of Star Trek Adventures. And I don't think we're planning on any uh, on offering any um, alternative rules to make that happen. Uh, so stay tuned for that if if, if it is true. I, again, I'll, I'll touch base with Nathan just to see if he's got any design ideas based on some of the other games that he's developed. But uh, again, this is a this is a question where it's possible you might be looking to push the game into places where it was never intended to go. Um, but, you know, more information as I have it. Prometheus, the stats in the Gamma Quadrant books are the stats for an NPC ship. When can we expect the space frame and full rules for their multi-vector assault node feature? Uh, not anytime soon. The Prometheus in the Gamma Quadrant book did include a sidebar about the multi-vector assault mode, and uh, I think that's uh, that's enough. I think for uh, for for a Prometheus, uh, that was a uh, space frame we saw in uh, one episode, plus a you know a little cameos and a couple of others, if I recall correctly. Uh, there are no plans to create a space frame for it officially, uh, other than what's in the Gamma Quadrant book. You can take what's in the Gamma Quadrant book and um, uh, break it down into what's most likely a space frame, and then adapt it for your use. Uh, and then any rules for the multi-vector assault mode is pretty much covered in that sidebar. So I would uh, encourage you to check that out and make use of it as you see fit. Uh, let's see, suggest a whole bunch of products here. So yeah, all these products have been on the design wish list and whiteboard for uh, since the year one, pretty much, uh, pretty much 2016, 2017, even when I was just a uh, writer on the line and then eventually became the project manager. Um, all these books of some format have been on that wish list, and they've been talked about quite a bit online, either on the official forums or in the Facebook groups or elsewhere. Um, I think, you know, we've been I've been pretty careful to look at everybody's suggestions for new products, and uh, in the rare instances that someone suggested something that wasn't already on the list, I've added it, added it, added it. Um, but yeah, rest assured, all these are on our wish list uh, somewhere. I uh, can't say. Too many of these are in current development, although um, we have products in the works that'll touch on some of these, right? But uh, yeah, all this stuff is on the list uh, in one format or another. So thanks for the question. Thanks for the comment. Um, Marcel from Germany, STA for me is the best RPG, ever, Star Trek RPG ever. Kudos, keep going. Yes, thank you, and yes, absolutely we will. But I must make an urgent request. Please add the movie error to the game. I mean, Starships, uh, Refit 1701, or Reliant, and Stats, Equipment, etc. Uh, so, Marcel, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with our full product line, but the uh, the, Star the Starfleet Core Rulebook has the uh, Miranda class, which is the Reliant based on, and the Command Source Book has the 1701 Refit. Um, as far as stats and equipment, the uh, the Core Rulebook has some equipment, and the other supplements, uh, I think, mentioned equipment here and there. Equipment is not particularly critical to uh, to the game, other than to create an advantage or something, so you can pretty much make whatever equipment you want. There's, I don't think there's anything in the movie era really so unique that it couldn't be fit into the game as it stands. 
Uh, we got most of the we got most of the space frames already between the command book and the and the core. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are hoping to do more uh, movie era stuff in the future. But uh, I think the game as it stands right now pretty much has the movie stuff. And I'd say uh, if there's something missing, uh, email me email me and let me know, and uh, I'll see where we can fit it in. Uh, but thank you for your comments. Really appreciate it. Uh, Sans D20 from Midmo USA. The info on the Excelsior class refit. Did that come from the rights holders or was that done in house? Uh, Excelsior class refit. Not sure what you're talking about there other than the Excelsior that's in the core book uh, or just the flavor text that was written around it. Um, all the writing is done in house and everything is reviewed and approved by Viacom CBS. Uh, they do not have. Um, you know, writing just sitting around waiting to be used in an RPG. Uh, we create all that content whole cloth, and then, you know, based on canon and secondary canon, and uh, the writer's own, um, you know, understanding of the property and the and the setting and the material. And so that was all the writing was done in house, and then CBS reviewed and approved it. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, if not, uh, send me another question, and I'll try again next time. Uh, let's see, Patrick from Canyon, with the stock of Q Workshop dice running out, are there plans afoot to make new division color sets with the new dice partner? The Klingon and starter set dice are so nice and clean. Yeah, so if you've looked at the starter set dice, or the Klingon dice that just came out, uh, we do have a new dice partner that we're working with, and yes, the Q Workshop dice that came out with the launch of the game back in 2017, the vast majority of that stock is now sold out and depleted, although you can still find that stuff out there in stores, here and there, I think the web, the, the Modiphius website might even have a few few sets left, um, but uh, I'm not sure what the stock level is offhand. I'd have to go look or ask. But uh, yes, there are plans afoot to make new division sets uh, based on our uh, uh, Klingon and starter size starter sets. Uh, you'll you'll see new D20 colors and that uh, that clean um, uh, challenge dice, the the black challenge dice with the the cleaner um, look and feel on them. Yes, so yeah, absolutely new division sets are coming. Uh, I don't have a date for you yet. I do know that uh, a lot of it has gone through approvals and has been approved, and we're just now working on uh, production and all that great stuff. So yes, the, to be determined when they're going to come out, but uh, yes, we do have new division color sets in the works. So thanks for that question. Uh, that is it for the questions. Uh, those, were, those were great questions. Thank you so much for sending them in. Please, if you do have more questions, by all means, send them my way, either uh, through the survey that you'll find on the official website or the subreddit or the Facebook groups. Um, again, you can go to the website, midifius.com backslash Star Trek. Check out the store, midifius.net. Official forums are there. Facebook group, search for Star Trek Adventures. There's a subreddit, several Discord channels, etc. Lots of uh, social media out there. Also, Twitter. You can uh, find me pretty much at all those places. I'm on social media quite a bit. I'm not hard to reach. Uh, if you have any questions about products, product availability, or the game, hit support at modifius.com or email me directly at jim.johnson at modifius.com. I'm happy to take your questions anytime. That is it. So, again, thank you so much. Have a great day. Happy First Contact Day. And uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Take care.